Okay, so we've been using our calculators to construct box plots and to read box plots and to look at the data. Now we're going to actually interpret the data. So we're going to look at these box plots and pull information from them. And so that's what we're going to be doing in the next um, set of slides we have here. Mr. Nelson and I are going to trade off to try to keep it lively. Nice. So this first one, boom! I have a box plot at the top. And so first off, we're going to extract information. You might see something on a quiz even. It says, what's the minimum? Well, I look at my graph, I say, oh, my graph, it's negative seven. Okay, because you can kind of see that's there. And then my first quartile, Q1, that's negative three, easy peasy. My median is negative one, cool. Uh, ooh, this one's a little bit difficult because it's not really there. You can just say like 4.5, keep it, keep it simple. Graphs aren't perfect, so we'll try our best. And then our maximum is a seven. Um, and then we ask, is there an outlier? Well, I don't see anything outside of the data here. I don't see anything outside of the data here. So I'd say no to the outliers. If it was yes, then I'd list them. And then we get to the fun part. It says, what percent of the data is in each quartile? So we've already talked about that before. We talked about how the quartile is divided into four parts or four quarters. And quarters are 25. So each, each quartile or, or each uh, set of unit or area is 25% of the data. So 25%. What percent of each data falls between negative 7 and 4.5? So negative 7 is here, and 4.5 is here. Well, then we look and say, okay, well, the whole thing is 100%. And so we look at, okay, well, then how many quartiles are covered here? Well, I have 1, 2, 3, each quartile being 25%. So that means that this would be 75% of my data. And then what percentage of the data is above negative 3? So again, I go to my data, I look and say, oh, here's negative three. I have one, two, three quartiles, so I'd have 75% of my data is above quartile three. And remember, each quartile, while they might look different sizes, because the, the spread of the data is more spread or more compact, each one has an equal amount. So if I had 10 pieces of data here, I'd have 10 here, 10 here, and 10 here. All right, Mr. Nelson, you're up. All right. Boom, shakalaka. All right, maybe you should pause the video and try this one on your own first, though. Okay, well, here we go. Let's find the minimum. Minimum is right here. It looks like it's at six. Our first quartile is where the box starts. That's at nine. The median, the middle of that box right there, 11. The third quartile is the end of the box, 13. The maximum is not 18. The maximum is this guy way out here, 27. Just because it's an outlier does not mean it's not the maximum. It is an outlier, so yes, we do have one, and that is at 27. Okay, so the maximum can still be the outlier. Don't forget that. What percentage of the data is in each quartile? Well, just like Mr. Craig said, each quartile has 25% of the data. And this is where it kind of gets confusing on this one, but pay attention. This is 25%. This is 25%. Uh, this is 25%. It's not just this part that's 25%. This whole section is 25%. It's just spread out because of that outline. Okay, so what percent of the, my data is in each quartile? That's 25%. Uh, what percent of the data falls between Q1 and Q3? Well, Q1 and Q3, Q1 is right here. Q3 is right here. That's two sections of data. So that's going to be 25 and 25% making 50%. And lastly, what percentage of the data is above 11? Well, where's 11? 11 is our median, 11 is right here, and so how many sections are above that? Now a lot of people don't want to say three, but that'd be incorrect. A lot of people go one, two, three. Remember this right here is all one section. That's not two sections, right? This is 25% of my data. This from Q3 all the way up to the maximum is another 25% of my data. So that is a total of 50% of my data. Well, next yeah. up, Mr. Craig. What? All right, go ahead and take a look at the data and solve it. And we're moving on. So this one is really spread out. It seems like you want to put an outlier in this, but it's just because my inner quartile range is so long, anything to be an outlier would be, have to be one and a half times longer than this. And that's just not going to happen here. So this doesn't have outliers. But I can go ahead and really quickly go through this. My minimum is three. My quartile one is 11. My median is 16. Oops, put that over here. My 
quartile three is 27. My maximum, which is way out here, is 35. And because there's nothing outside of that, I have no outliers um, in this data. Cool. And then it says, what percent of my data is each quartile? I wonder why we keep asking this question. The reason is, is people really struggle with this. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You've got to know that each section is divided up into 25%. And the reason why box and whiskers are so interesting is because if the median is the middle of my data, that means in the box and whisker, I can quickly tell where 50% of my data is. So if I'm talking about class scores, I can see where the middle, half, middle part of my class is. If I'm talking about um, the temperatures uh, in, a, in a week, I can see where the average 50% of my temperatures were. It just helps me quickly look at the data. Now it says, what percentage of my data falls between 11 and 27? Well, that's 11 and 27 is Q1 and Q3. That's my interquartile range. So I can just take a look at that and say, oh, that percentage is going to be 50%. Talked about that half. And then what percentage of my data is above 11? Well, above 11, how many quartiles are above 11? Well, we have this part, this part, and this part. So we have three quartiles worth of it. So that's going to be 75%. I shouldn't say quartiles. I should say sections because we actually use the quartiles, one, two, and three right here. All right, let's try another, Mr. Nelson. Just like the other. Oh, yay. That one looks like it should have had. This one looks like it should have an outlier. So we'll talk about that in just a second. All right, so what's the minimum? Let's go through that. We'll talk about outliers here in a second. Uh, minimum. The minimum is two. First quartile is seven. The median is 12. Third quartile, right there at 15. And the maximum way up here. And that's what we're probably thinking is going to be an outlier, right? So we got 32 being the maximum. If I remember right, we did yeah. this. So it, it looks just too far, right? If you were to take one and a half of these, right, and you were to tack that on there, anything above that's going to be an outlier. Now we don't have the data here to actually calculate all that, but that does give us a good idea. When we saw that really long length, uh, that tells us that there's probably an outlier out there. So this is just how we would represent that. But that does not change the maximum. The maximum is still 32. So yes, we do have an outlier here, and yes, that may have been a little tricky if you paused it and you thought, like, well, it didn't look like there was one. I know, we changed it on you. That outlier is 32, and then the next data point in our data was 25, because it's at the end of the whisker, but we don't really know anything else other than two might be the minimum. So, all right, so what is the outlier? We just said that is 32. Uh, what percentage of the data falls between 15 and 32? 15 is right here, 32 is way up here. Remember that this is not two sections, that is just one section. There's only one section between Q3 and the max. Um, because it's only one section, that's 25%. And then lastly, what percentage of the data is above 32? Well, what's 32? Did I say above or below? Above. above. What percentage of the data is above 32? Well, this is 32. How, how many data points are above that? None. None, right? So 0%. 0% of our data is above 32. But if it said, what percentage, of data, what percentage of data is below 32? Below 32 would be all of our data, right? So it'd be 100%. Cool. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Ooh. So we actually pulled this from an old test. Um, what we have here is we're comparing two sets of data. We have set A and set B. And it says the box plot above summarized two data sets, A and B, which of the following must be true. And it says set A contains more data set that made more data than set B. And A looks longer, so a lot of students fall for this. They go, oh, well, this is bigger, so it must be more, right? Bigger's more. But remember, we said quartiles are all they're gonna be the same, but we don't know because we don't know what the data is. I don't know if there are five pieces of data in each one of these or a hundred. Just like I don't know for B, so I, this, I can't tell you that this is true or not because I don't know enough information. Let's see. The box of set A contains more data than the box of set B. Once again, this is where students fall into that, that trick where they say, well, A looks longer, so it must be bigger, right? But that's not true because it just means it's more spread out. It doesn't mean that there's more pieces of data in there. And since I don't know how many numbers are there, I don't know. So again, box A contains more data than box set B. I don't know that to be true. 
because there's not enough information. And then finally, the data in set A has a larger range than the data in set B. And the way we find range is we take the largest or the maximums, subtract the minimum, um, and that's how we find the range. And you can see that this is much wider or more, the range is longer than the range here. So the only thing that is true about this one is three only. So I would click here. Be careful about this stuff um, where we don't know the information unless we actually solve it.